and welcome back to AR77. Today we are looking at the Humorex Beretta M92FS pellet pistol. So this is a CO2 powered 0.177 pellet shooter from Humorex in Germany. And it is without doubt one of my favourite pistols, one of the best guns I feel like I have in my collection for a whole host of reasons which I'll go through and delight in sharing with you right now. So if you don't have one of these, you will, if you've seen them in the shops, you'll see that they're quite expensive, they're at the higher end. If you were only going to have one pistol, if you were only going to have one, <laughs> well let's not narrow it down, if you were going to have one pellet pistol that was a replica in your collection, this might be a smart buy. It doesn't have blowback. Doesn't ha it has you know it doesn't have a or it doesn't have a fixed slide, but it doesn't have a uh, a blowback slide. It doesn't have a slide that you can rack. It doesn't have a full size dropout metal magazine or any of that. But it's still an exceptionally good pistol, and I think it's important maybe just to draw the distinction because these, just like the CP eighty eight. They don't function just like their kind of real world counterparts. So from that point of view, they're not very close replicas, you could you could argue. But if you want a gun or a pistol that is good at what it does and has the added benefit of looking like some of your favourite real world pistols, that's why you might want to pick up one of these. Because as a pistol it's fairly accurate and it's well built, very well made. And it happens to look like a Beretta M92FS in nickel. So what's not to like? You can get these in black more recently. I think over within the last couple of years, they've released kind of chrome, fully chromed versions of this and the CP88 by Walther. Not sure about that. I think it might be a bit too much for me, although sometimes they look cool. <laughs> so let's have a look at this this pistol, this lovely pistol in front of us, and I'll show you how it works. Um, if you've seen my review of the CP88, none of this will be surprising because they operate pretty much in exactly the same way. Let's have a quick walk around first of all. So you've got the lovely Beretta grips there. Once again, you can get a walnut grip for this pistol, just like you can for the CP88. You've got your safety there, working safety, which is ambidextrous. With the lovely red dot there, just to make sure you know you're safe or you're on fire. And that's a nice firm response. And then look at this lovely Beretta PB etched into the slide. Caliber information there, 0.177. 4.5 millimeter. You have these slide serrations at the back, but obviously you can't rack the slide. You can't rack the slide from the front either, but there's a reason that they're there, and I'll talk about that soon. Similar to the um, CP88, you've got your takedown lever there, but it doesn't take the pistol down. It does have a function there, and you've got your slide catch release there. Well, that doesn't work, but it's nicely colored the same sort of nickel plating or, or whatever you call it. Nice black trigger there. I like the, I know the earlier Berettas, they're kind of smooth around here, but I do like it. I think it's when it got to the FS model, I'm not sure. But when they have that little, it could just scoops out of the front, I like that. Because it reminds me of when I first saw Berettas, the 92 was uh, Die Hard and Lethal Weapon. They were the two films where I think Mel Gibson carries a Beretta 92 in, in Lethal Weapon. Bruce Willis carries one in Die Hard. And that was it. I was like, oh, this, these are gorgeous guns. Just the whole styling of them with that kind of indent there and the, and the open exposed kind of barrel. They just look so unique. It's such a unique design. It's like, I don't know. Well, I guess it's the closest you could compare it to with it being Italian is a Ferrari. It's, they have a style all of their own. Um, and they're so gorgeous, big guns, big, heavy, you know, not messing about. If if this gun gets drawn, people hear about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, great, 
great films. And again, I like the fact that this has got the no nonsense lower there. So there's no Picatinny here. This is just classic, classic, not tactical, just classic, beautiful lines of the pistol. Come around to the front here. You've got that kind of recessed barrel, which is quite nice. And you can see, can I get a bit of light in there? There's a bit of rifling going on there. A bit of cheeky rifling, so you know it's going to be shooting pellets more accurately. They're going to be spinning as they come out. Round to the other side, then. Lovely finish on this pistol. You got a bit more licensing information there, made in Germany, which makes it precision by Umarex. Really nice pistol. Look at that. Whichever way you hold it is a good angle. <laughs> However. It, Whichever way you come across this gun, it looks it looks great from all angles. Really love this quite severe cut out there, so you can get right up in there. Sight wise, sight picture, pretty good for some accurate shooting there. There's not a lot of wiggle room. Shame there's no white dots again. Um, you've got this, you've got this kind of seam across the top here, so it's obviously in two pieces towards the back. But fortunately, that doesn't carry on through that front piece there. Really chunky, feels really good in hand again, and single and double action. So, no CO2 in here. If I pull the trigger, that's going to do everything, all the work there. I can also, and most of the time when I'm shooting it, I'm cocking it like that, engaging that trigger, and then releasing it. It's just more accurate if you're shooting at targets. It's a, it's a lighter trigger pull. Yeah, really nice. So, this little catch here, which you, normally, if it was the actual Beretta, you'd push it through from there, flip it down, and it'd let your slide come off. But in this version, this is just to release that kind of uh, breach there, just like that. So that does that, opens up. You can see in there. Can you see in there? Yeah. Can you see in there? So you see a two's coming through and you need some of these. And I say some because it's amazing how quickly eight rounds go. So these are, I've loaded these up to show you because I did a, a bit of a hash job when I was talking about the CP88. I'm trying to show you where the pistols go. There you go. So you can see that they are loaded with that kind of cog in the middle. And you put them in head first, if you will. You can see I use wad cutters because they never they never stick out too far and they're quite accurate and they leave you know they leave a nice satisfying circular hole in your target so you can see where you've shot. Sometimes if you get the pointed ones, they just leave a little cut in the target and it's hard from a distance to see where your shot has landed. So I use these wad cutters. Um that'll go in there with the Pellets facing this way towards the front of the gun, obviously. And then close that up, hence these slide serrations are there to help you close that up without having to put your hand in front of the muzzle. Yeah. Uh, so let's take that out. And I'll talk to you now about CO2. So from with the Walther CP88. You, uh, oh, what happened there? We just got a burst of light. The CP88, we uh, we push the button from the this from this side, and the, and the handle splits off. But this is a little bit more accurate in that, for well, certainly for a right-handed shooter, you'd press that for your magazine to drop. You'd press it from this side, and true to form, on this pistol, you do press it from that side, and it releases the underside. Yeah, so that's kind of, it's good for the right-handed people among us. Sorry for all you lefties. Um, discriminated against once again. And there you go. There's some workings here. This is where you put your CO2. So first of all, you release that, just the same as the other one. You slide that little screw down, put your CO2 in, slide it, you know, screw it up as much as you can. And then for the last little bit, you push it up like that and pierce the CO2. Then you take your 
cover, pop it on there, a nice firm click shows you that it's in place. This pistol is probably going to shoot at about 350 feet per second, I would say. Um, it's fairly accurate. Obviously, it's got a rifled barrel and you're shooting pellets, so it's going to be more accurate than a BB shooter. It's a really lovely weight to it, a very heavy pistol, and it feels very authentic, especially once you've been holding all the sort of the polymer wonders or the Glocks and the more recent Smith & Wessons, uh, the more recent SIGs and so on and so forth. It's nice to have a full metal gun in your hand. Uh, I know it's you know that's just how they make guns these days, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I like the polymer guns, but I do like the full metal feel of a 1911 or a Beretta 92FS. So there you go, the Umarex Beretta M92FS pellet shooting, 0.177 pellet shooting, CO2 powered air pistol. Definitely one for your collection. Again, you can get it in black, you can get it in this finish, you can get it, uh, there's, a, there's a, an extreme one, which has, I believe, like a mock suppressor on the front and a kind of a scope or something here and a torch and a bell and a whistle and all sorts of things. This is my favorite version, this kind of satin nickel coated version. Uh, it looks classy and a little bit special without being too showy and too bling. Uh, but yeah, you can you'll see these in pretty much every American action feature from about 1980 <laughs> to the present day. Bad Boys, Lethal Weapon, Die Hard, Terminator, Commando, all of those. If there's not a Beretta 92 in it, it's probably not worth watching. Hope you enjoyed the review. Please do like, subscribe, share, and I will see you next time. All the best. Bye.